Hello everyone, it's Religious Fanboy here again, and today we are discussing the Christian lessons and themes in episode 2 of Assassination Classroom. As, as with the last episode, um, the disclaimer is the same due to the female English teacher's character design and the few glimpses of her briefly in the opening, I'd recommend um, skipping the opening and just, and if you're just wanting the lessons, themes from the episodes that we'll be discussing, um, the only three episodes that we will be discussing are episodes one through three. And today we are discussing episode two and how it pertains to the, how it parallels the Christian ideas of having unique gifts and callings and Paul's illustration in First Corinthians of the church being made up, being one body made up of many different parts. And with that being said, the main message is that God has, for this video, is that God has given every Christian unique gifts and callings. And the main illustration from the episode is Suguno's conversations with Nagisa and Korosensei about, in regards to his style of pitching in baseball. And poor Sensei is made aware of this due to Tsukuno's creative um, assassination attempt. And with that being said, I'm going to move on to our first passage of scripture, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. It says, now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. One way this is shown throughout the episode, and throughout these three episodes, is the students are meant to be working as a team with their task of as killing their teacher. And in the form of baseball and any time when you are working together with other people as well as just as Christians living our lives alongside our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to be mindful of each other's spiritual stages of development and being supportive and helping and encouraging them in any ways that we can. And we see, like in episode one, this comes in many forms with Korosente and Tsuginos conversations where Koro Sensei even says that the baseball player that Tsugano idolizes that baseball player's pitching style is not like Tsugano's pitching style is not meant to be the same as that baseball player. Um, and the reason he gives is Tsugano having more flexible wrists and shoulders. And thus, he is encouraged and motivated after coming out of that conversation 
to work more on his curve balls rather than his fast balls due to the curve the process of pitching a curveball being more suited towards his unique gifts and physical abilities. Like how there are people working in ministry, we are all given the same task as all Christians to go and make disciples who make disciples throughout the world. And that looks, that will take on different forms in many different ways because we go through different life experiences and can relate to certain people in certain ways. But we also, like with Sugino, it is also our different gifts and skills in that help determine and help us to focus into the areas that God seems to be calling us and seems to have prepared and equipped us to enter into in order to fulfill the Great Commission of making disciples who make disciples. And then I'm going to move to our next Bible verse, which is Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each individually as he wills. For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. This continues to evoke the same idea that we brought up with in the conclusion of our first talking point in our first passage of scripture, that being the idea of God uniquely empowering each and every one of us in different ways in order to fulfill his plan and help bring more humans and bring our fellow humans into relationship with Christ. Um, and encourage each other to continue to reciprocate the relationship and interests, pursuits that Jesus and God has been showing to us ever since the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3. And with that being said, I'm going to jump down to to our next passage of scripture. This will be our longest one. And this one is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 13 through 27. For in one spirit we are baptized. For in one spirit we were baptized, we were all baptized into one body, Jews, Greeks, slaves, or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, 
that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would this where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye could not say to the hand, I have no need for you, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need for you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individual and individually members of it. We see this talked about many times in the church, in some denominations that we even have titles that go from clergy bishops, your saints, your popes, and we even in other denominations such as Methodist, Baptist, we have the terms clergy and layperson. The clergy of the more contemporary churches consists of your preachers, your youth pastors, and other forms of paid staff limited to but not inclu including but not limited to the elders of the church but just because those roles are paid and are more common and more mainstream of your thinking of what ministry and worship is, that doesn't make the job of a greeter or the person who sets up the communion or oversees the maintaining of the care of the baptismal any more important, any more or less important, because, and this needs to be remembered whenever we are called into a position of teaching in at any level in ministry and in discipleship. Because it was something that was taught by Jesus through his washing of the feet of the twelve disciples, where he gave us an example of what it means to be a true and godly leader. And in order to be a godly leader, we must be the first servant. Because in ministry, no matter how much you may have studied theology or how many years of experience in the church, you are the advocate.
you play the role of a modern day prophet in which you are an advocate of God and a servant and a translator for between God and the congregation and given the heavy task of interpreting and translating God's teachings for those who have not had the time or the calling to study as intentively as yourself. And we see this with the students of E-Class as they are talked about in regards to the grander scope of their school, where they are cast aside, viewed as screw-ups and, and criminals, and everyone has basically given up on them and tried to ignore them. And in life, as we see those pe people around us every day that feel neglected, aren't having their needs met, and need a godly person in their life to help them and provide comfort. We need to be mindful and be quick to listen to whatever God may ask of us in order to share God's love with the people around us, no matter how seemingly big or small that gesture, that gesture may be. And with that being said, this was part two of a three-part sermon series. And the shorter, smaller devotional video is on TikTok, and we'll, the link will be in the description, as well as a link again to Christchurch's lovely website, where you can set up one-time giving or reoccurring giving as a special thank you for them for allowing us to record in their lovely sanctuary again. And with that being said, may God be with you, and I will see you next time. Bye.